All right, I think we're ready to rock and roll. So Hardy-Davidson released the Pan America back in 2021, taking their first stab at the adventure motorcycle market. And it took the long-standing adventure motorcycle brands by storm, quickly becoming the number one selling adventure motorcycle in the full-size touring category in North America. So the Pan America has been in the wild for just a little over two years now, and I believe it deserves some attention. So why so quickly did the Pan America become the number one selling adventure motorcycle in North America? Is it the Hardy brand behind the bike or is it just a badass capable adventure bike? And most of all, should you buy the Pan America? And should you switch to the Pan America if you currently own another adventure motorcycle brand? And how does it handle and what are its capabilities on and off road? Well, I'm gonna answer those questions in this video and I have a whole bunch of other information to throw at you. Oh, and at the end, I have some insight to share with you about what's next for Harley Davidson in the adventure motorcycle market. You definitely won't wanna miss that, so stick around. Hang on tight. Oh, and real quick, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit. Another biker joins the revolution. We'd love to have you be part of it. Well, welcome back, Bike Alex. Ryan Docker here, lawbuddingbiker.com. Always thank you for checking back in. So before we get started, I just wanna give you a little background because I think it's important. You see, I was blessed enough to be invited uh, shortly after the Pan America release in 2021 to Sturgis to test ride and review it and ride it around the beautiful Black Hills area. And of course, I released a video on it back in 2021. If you wanna know every detail and everything that surrounds the Pan America, definitely you'll wanna check out that video and I will link to it in the description below. So recently, me and the Law Abiding Biker crew, well, we geared up and headed out to the Tour Tech Rally in Plain, Washington. We were really excited to get our old trusty KLRs out there in the mountains and get ripping. Additionally, Hardy was hooking me up with a Pan America that I would get to ride for one entire day at that multi-day rally. Better yet, I was gonna get to hang out with, talk with, and ride with one of the engineers that worked on the Pan America from its inception. And although Hardy hooked me up with a Pan America for the day, they never tell me what I can and can't say when I review any of their bikes, or you guys know me, I simply wouldn't do a review. And with that said, you too can ride a Pan America at any of the adventure rallies they're at with their demo bikes. So it was time for me to reacquaint myself with the adventure market upsetter, the Hardy Davidson Pan America. Looks like uh, we are officially here. Tour Tech 2023. I'm the guy that's supposed to be meeting you today. Awesome. I mean, meet, meet a celebrity. I don't get to do that all the time. Oh, you put me on camera right off the bat. Yeah. 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 All right, here with Terry Rumpel, engineer, right, uh, on the uh, Pan America project. Uh, I imagine, you know, Hardy came to you and said, hey, you know, engineer, we want to do this adventure bike. Can you kind of just, you know, give me a little history on that and kind of what it was like actually being involved with the creation of this uh, awesome bike? Yeah, it was, uh, it was really exciting because you think about it, you know, Harley Davidson makes every single day is what everybody knows Harley Davidson for. And then uh, to come out and go, hey, we want to make that bike. So really taking something like that and asking a group of engineers to do something that's uh, not the normal at Harley Davidson, uh, we, we had people lined up to uh, join that group. So it was, it was a lot of fun, very interesting. Now, did you ride um, adventure prior to this project, or did that get you excited about riding? It got adventure? me excited about it. You know, I, I grew up on a farm in western Wisconsin, always had dirt bikes, and then I always had a love for Harley Davidson. One of the very early hurdles was how do we test this thing? We are so set up at our facilities to test on road bikes. So we had to go out and do that. We had to get that. Uh, and collecting data and then taking that back to our building and going, okay, we have to test in a completely different way. If you can take out of the many features that you guys worked on, what was probably your proudest thing on that bike that's in existence now? Um, I, I think the probably the proudest for the whole team is the ARH system. And I can't take credit for it. We got a team that deals with suspension. They are probably the best in the world on some of this stuff. That's probably the biggest one. When people don't know if it's working because it's working so well and they're sitting there flat-footed and you go, well, you're, you're flat-footed. 
yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And I was, we were actually talking tonight. It's, it's very seamless. And what we're talking about is, you know, the Pan America. When you come to a stop, if I screw it up, fix me. But it it lowers um, up to several inches, yep. dependent, right? And then as soon as you take off, um, it raises back up, so you get that ground clearance and the lean angle you want. But I will tell you, as Terry said, it's very, very seamless. You don't even know it's happening, and then all of a sudden, a guy five eight, flat footed. That is a key feature. Yeah. Um, on that bike so yeah well done and, and the other part of it is you for off-road you can lock it in the high position uh is it a dual throttle body on top yes what's the advantage you've got dual plates right right so you can you can start playing uh some strategies of you can you can you can move things differently yeah. you can control it a little differently you're not hand held to one More. throttle body more precise. Precise, more precise for, for the rider and Got they it. can tune it a little bit better or we can tune it better. Then the transmission is up high. Like the typical Harley transmissions are right at the yep. bottom. What's the advantage for having the tranny so high? Well, the I mean, this whole powertrain is completely new. Mm -hmm. right? So we threw everything out the window. You want to try to keep weight high, or at least we wanted the engine to be as short on the bottom or as high in the chassis as we can so we can get ground clearance. Um, but that also, that setup also helps with um, you know, direction of the chain, um, the ability to uh, get more travel out of the swing arm, things like that, just by where you set up that transmission. Yep, we did everything so we could keep that engine as, as short as possible in the chest. Is this really what I think it is? Alright, there she is. And I am excited. Haven't seen one in person with the yellow paint yet. That's pretty cool. Alright, been a few years since I rode it down in Sturgis. But familiar for sure. Here we go, getting out of the Tour Tech rally here. Oh, and I forgot this Rev Max right off the bat. Roll that throttle and it just wants to lift that front end the torque so I'm just uh, reminded on the pavement here as we get going uh, it's all coming back to me but we've got the ride modes and I'm just right up here my index finger on my right hand and I can just flip through them on my screen you see it there I'm gonna put it in sport here oh yeah it definitely wakes it up and she likes to be revved high. This motor just seems really comfortable at high RPMs. I remember that too. For now, I kicked it into off-road mode. And it definitely tames it a bit as far as uh, I can reef the throttle. And uh, you know, you won't lose your back end as easy. You can completely turn the modes off. Uh, so you can just have full experience uh, of the bike with sliding the rear and I was able to wheelie it down in Sturgis because it does have that uh, front end uh, so that it doesn't wheelie on you. I forget exactly what it's called but yeah when I reef it there the back end starts to go but then it catches it and uh, slows the spin down so that you get get traction so forget how well these modes work. My name is Justin Kleider and we travel the country with the Pan America Semi. So we go from adventure rally to adventure rally with 23 Pan America motorcycles and we take people out on, uh, we let them do self-guided on-road demos and then we take them out on guided mixed surface demos, real light off-road stuff to get a feel for the Pan America off the pavement as well. Awesome man. Sounds like quite the job, and uh, I appreciate you guiding me around today. Yeah, it's been a ton of fun, Ryan. Yeah, Thanks nice, a lot. Nice meeting you, too. Yeah, likewise. Shouting out your name, calling. All right, so we're in uh, regular off-road mode. If I push and hold the mode button, it'll turn purple. Now we're in off-road plus. So in off-road plus mode, uh, that back tire will, you know, when you floor it, the gravel, it'll slide around a lot farther. didn't notice that and uh, in off-road plus you do lose your rear ABS so be aware of that and oh I remember this motor man Revy you can really feel that power in the higher RPMs oh yeah If 
you're wondering how the suspension's doing on all this, amazing. And uh, got both wheels off on that one. And now that they've been out in the wild a couple years, you know, it's really interesting talking to Terry and Justin about how they work, you know, together. The feedback that the engineers are able to take from guys like Justin and other riders out here, they really, really want to continue to make this a great bike and into the future. And so um, taking that feedback of, you know, real world environment out here, um, and just getting these bikes out and getting miles on them, because uh, they are still fairly new, but uh, killing it nonetheless. So interesting to see how much they, uh, are willing to just work together to make sure it's the best bike that uh, Hardy can produce for adventure riding here. Justin says uh, we got more riding to do. We are not done. We are not done. He's taking more us on. More fun ahead. Yeah, buddy. All right, just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a ton of man hours and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong, just trying to help as many bikers as we can worldwide. You can support us by becoming a patron member. I'll link to it in the description below. There are benefits for becoming a member, such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. Nothing but bikers helping and connecting with other bikers in there. You get access to live video broadcasts and chat podcasts early, premium videos up on requests, and of course, access to ride, meetup, and events. We appreciate you considering becoming a member. Let's get back into your video. Okay, so I got to back down here a little bit and the nice thing about the pan as soon as I get on we get the kickstand up and then I literally turn it on and as soon as I do that it's lowering right now and now I am flat footed so it makes it uh, that's such a nice feature it makes it backing out of spots like this really easy So just riding some really loose gravel here and the more time I spend with the bike the more you just settle into it but it's amazing when you come up on these gravel corners so I'm coming in really hot I'm gonna just the back just starts to walk a little bit and it just settles right into that corner I lock the rear up just a little and I'm not getting an ABS on purpose just practicing good braking techniques but you can literally just kind of slide in slowly and then just We'll let the rear wheel go and it just settles really nice right into these corners so again coming in really pretty hot and settle in slide a little bit let it slide and, and then we power out and slide a little bit but everything kind of reacts to what i'm doing in this off-road mode sliding in a little bit here again we'll settle in there we go It's just a matter of trusting all the stuff and it definitely can be trusted. But like I said, I just don't have the stuff, so learning to trust these systems to do what I normally do, it's amazing. Nice, bro. That was fun. Yeah. Losing 
losing my sanity I'm calling Shouting out your name I'm calling Is this really what I think it is? Big fan of yours, man. Hey, nice to meet you. Keith. Nice where are you from? You. I'm from Portland. Yeah, I, I, Portland. Thanks yeah. for coming up and saying hi, man. Yeah. How you doing? Say good. What's your I name? I met you and Ben. Oh yeah, a month ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a month ago. Hi, yeah. yeah. Nice, bro. Yeah. Do you didn't mind catching a selfie with me? Absolutely. Please do. So you better believe I had an absolute blast riding the Pan America around the beautiful mountains around Plain Washington. So I'm going to give you some thoughts and opinions and things you should consider if you're at all interested in the Pan America or any other adventure motorcycle for that matter. So let's first remember what category the Pan America is in within the adventure market. It is a full-size touring adventure motorcycle. And although unfortunate, I do see many inexperienced riders trying to compare the Pan America to smaller, lighter, less powerful adventure motorcycles. So the Pan America is best compared to its biggest rival, which would be the BMW 1250 GS, which has been on the market for a long time and it is a great bike. So these full-size adventure touring motorcycles are best suited for forest service roads and fire roads, and maybe you spend half your time on the road. It's sort of a 50-50 mix between off-road and street, and these are just heavier bikes. Certainly the Pan America is capable of more gnarly terrain with an experienced rider, but just understand you're gonna work harder in those environments due to the weight. So if you're gonna do more technical riding and single track, you'd certainly want to move to another category within the adventure market with something lighter and smaller. It's all gonna come down to what terrain you're mostly riding and of course your capabilities. So let's see how the Pan America stacks up to the BMW 1250 GS. And if you're new to the channel, just understand that I support all motorcycles and brands. I just absolutely love the sport of motorcycling. The BMW 1250 GS is a very capable bike. It's been ridden many years by many riders. And of course, the same goes for the Hardy Pan America now. What I'm about to say are just the simple facts and need to be discussed because price and features are always important. And real quick, if you're new to the channel and you appreciate this content, please consider shopping in the Law Abiding Biker store. We're always adding new products and it definitely helps support our efforts to help as many bikers as we can worldwide. Check out right away in the store, Biker Gripper cell phone motorcycle mount on our adventure bikes and our street bikes tested for like eight years now. You'll love it. So the Hardy Pan America Special comes in at a base price of $20,399, while the BMW 1250GS starts at $20,345. Now, although the BMW comes in at about $50 cheaper than the Pan America base price, it's not actually completely true because you're gonna to need to add a $3,300 premium package to the BMW to get GPS preparation, ride modes pro, cruise control, tire pressure monitor, keyless ride, dynamic ESA, which is electronic suspension, heated grips, and aluminum side cases. So the BMW now comes in at $23,645. So all those features that you gotta pay for to get on the BMW, aside from the aluminum side cases, uh, those all come standard with the Pan America Special at the base price of $20,399. So to be fair, if you do add aluminum side cases to the Pan America Special, those will cost you about $1,038. And then add that to the base price, you get a total of $21,437 in comparison to the BMW coming in at $23,645, making the Pan America Special $2,208 less expensive than the BMW. Additionally, the Pan America is lighter, weighing in at 569 pounds wet running order, while the BMW comes in at 591 pounds in running order. It is worth noting that the BMW does have a larger fuel tank at 7.9 gallons, while the Pan America has a 5.6 gallon tank, so that obviously accounts for some of the weight with the BMW. So accounting for the extra two gallons of gas on the BMW and doing the math, the Pan America really comes in about 10 pounds lighter. Now the BMW does have a bit more torque at 105 foot pounds, while the Pan America has 94 foot pounds of torque. Although the Pan America has a bit more power coming in at 150 horsepower, the BMW coming in at 136 horsepower. So these are just some of the major things you should consider uh, if you're gonna purchase either of these bikes. And we're gonna stop there because I'm not gonna spec these bikes to death. And rarely is anything perfect. And I actually had some, well, rather nitpicky things uh, about the Pan America when I test rode it back in Sturgis 2021. Anyways, if you wanna check that out, I'll put that video on the end screen and link to it in the description below. So next, I just wanna talk a little bit about rider connection. So what I'm seeing uh, between BMW and Harley 
uh, is really that Harley right now, I believe, is just smashing it when it comes to getting in front of the adventure rider market, along with taking current Hardy street riders and trying to get them interested in the adventure game while also serving dual discipline riders like me. And them just being present at the Tour Tech rally is just one example, and this isn't the only rally they're going to. They really wanna get riders on these demo bikes, so if you're at one of the rallies, make sure you test ride it you'll be smiling ear to ear. And I'm just not seeing BMW taking guys like me that ride adventure and street and putting us on BMWs and getting them out in front of these audiences. BMW seems to stay within the boundaries of either adventure or street without a lot of crossover. Certainly if BMW sent me one of their bikes, I'd certainly give it a fair and balanced review. It's very clear that Harley took the release of the Pan America very seriously becoming the number one selling adventure motorcycle in North America very quickly and just crushed a lot of the long-standing brands. And it's things like Harley did by upsetting the market that pushes every other brand to also produce the best that they can. And of course us riders, well, we reap the benefits. Competition in the marketplace is definitely good. Maybe the long-standing adventure brands were getting lazy and not innovative enough, and hopefully this will push them. I don't know, time will tell. So who is the Harley Pan America for? So the Pan America is certainly suited and will make any experienced rider smile ear to ear, guaranteed. And on the flip side, it's certainly suited for a beginner or novice rider, especially with all the technology baked in and ride modes. Okay, let's just face it, Harley smashed it with the adaptive ride height. And I can almost guarantee that other brands like BMW and KTM are working on something similar. We'll see if it comes out on their bikes in the future. The Pan America and all its technology and ride modes, I can say, make it very easy and forgiving for a new rider to start riding off-road. And with the advanced ride modes and, of course, the ability to turn them all the way off, it'll take an experienced rider and give them the opportunity to really push hard and challenge themselves. Okay, so what is next for Hardy-Davidson within the adventure market? With that said, I want to tell you that I have no inside information whatsoever from Hardy-Davidson. What I'm about to tell you are my thoughts, opinions, and I'm going to give you some predictions, and that's just based on watching the market and kind of seeing where things are going. So, like I said, Harley clearly nailed it within the full-size adventure touring market. And now that the bike's been in the wild for two years, they're obviously collecting a lot of data and feedback from riders to make it even better, or maybe move into another category. And it would only make sense that Hardy would next move to upset the middle weight adventure market. My prediction is they're gonna release a smaller, lighter 975 version of the Pan America. And we all know that they do already have the 975 Revolution Max motor. And I have talked to a lot of other riders at rallies and events that are also awaiting a middle weight version of the Pan America. And for me, that would just simply be a better bike based on the areas and sorts of riding I do. You see, I like to get into more technical riding and even some single track, and this bike would absolutely crush it if it's anything like its big brother. Okay, Harley, I'm waiting for my 975 Pan America, so just let me know when it's ready. Oh, and uh, let me know what color options I have. All right, I'm popping a couple of videos on the screen here for you. One is going to be that 2021 Sturgis Pan America review. Check it out. Anyways, when you're done, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, Bikeaholics. Peace. This is really what I think it is.